Welcome parents and families to episode four of COVID-19 Connection. I'm Tori Palmer and I'm the administrator of parent and family programs at Auburn University. In a few minutes, we'll have our interview with Corey Edwards, Director of Student Involvement. But first, let's do some operational reminders. At this time, masks are required on Auburn University's interior campus spaces. Uh, masks are required outdoors when six feet of physical distancing cannot be maintained. Additionally, we're still in the operational area where events with up to 100 people are allowed with the possibility for larger gatherings with certain permissions obtained. This week in our interview segment, we will be speaking with Corey Edwards, who's the Director of Student Involvement. We hope that you enjoy our interview and we look forward to seeing you on the other side. So Corey, I guess I should say, hey, it's hey day here on campus. We're recording this on Wednesday. It's good to see you. Thanks for joining us. And Corey is the uh, Director of Student Involvement and the Student Engagement Team here at Auburn University. Hey, Tori, as you said, happy hey day. Um, thank you for having me on this afternoon. Thanks for joining us. I think we're going to talk about some things that will be helpful for our parents and families to hear back home. So let's get started right out of the gate. And this is a common question I get from a lot of parents and families. I have heard from my student that everything is virtual on campus. Are there not any in-person programming opportunities going on? Tori, that is a great question, um, and I'm happy to address that. So that is a big question. What is happening on campus? Are we just doing virtual events? And I'm glad to have some updated data as of the beginning of this week that we have had about 642 in-person um, journal events, meetings, and, and social events. So all of that combined, um, 642 events. So that definitely speaks to we are um, striving to um, have in-person offerings um, for our students to be engaged and to interact with one another. So those things are happening. And this is a raw number that doesn't account for all of those events, but through um, several of those events, we've tracked uh, over 9,500 unique students have attended those events that I mentioned. So we're definitely um, excited to to have students um, in that in-person setting. We understand that that's important, and um, but we're trying to do that safely and um, make sure that everyone is uh, within the, the guidelines that we have as a university. So I guess related to that, there is a sort of general concern from a lot of parents that there's just a lack of campus experiences happening. Um, what would you say to those parents and families who are concerned about that? That is a, that is a fair, um, uh, question and an assumption, I guess, a, a challenge that we're all having is, is um, there are people who are um, that are on campus and off campus and just maybe because um, students don't have the opportunity to come to campus for their classes as much, they're not also able to see what's happening on campus. So it is very important for them to use some of our mechanisms, mechanisms that we have in place and use AU Involve, our, our central hub for for experiences and events that are happening and meetings that are happening on campus. It's important for them to, to, to work to find those opportunities, um, maybe more so when they were walking down the concourse on a more regular basis, able to see the tabling, able to see the banner pole signs that, that tell you about all of those experiences that are happening on a weekly basis. So you, you mentioned that you involved, and I think this is a good time just to directly ask the question, what ways can students find out what type of events are happening on campus. Absolutely. So that AU Involved platform, it's a campus lab space platform that we use here on campus. It's our hub um, for our registered student organizations. They all have um, pages um, where you can learn about the organizations, their leadership when they meet, but it's also our best calendar tool that we have for our student organizations. So definitely during COVID, um, and our, and our, our campus guideline, campus event guidelines right now require that student groups and, and entities around the campus um, register their events and meetings in AU Involved. So that is a one-stop shop for anyone to be able to go and, and understand organizations, whether it's ones that are, um, that are through student affairs or maybe it's something in the College of, the Harvard College of Business or, or engineering, et cetera those events should be registered through that AU Involved platform. And so there's a nice platform on there for you to be able to go and see when those events are. You can search further out or you can see what's happening currently. Corey, clearly there's a lot of ways to get involved, but 
a question that we're getting from a lot of parents and families is what type of actual events are even taking place on campus right now? That's a great question. I would say ones that through student involvement that we're offering and trying to offer across the board to the student um, body are, I mean, this past week there was a painting workshop. Um, so we've had painting workshops, we've had student center takeovers where we bring in all kinds of games and activities and they're happening in different areas safely around the building and outside of the building. Um, today was heyday, for example, um, a tradition that dates back all the way to um, World War II, and it's just show, showcasing Auburn's friendly campus. And so that has had virtual components, and that has had in-person components today, where lunch was served on the campus green, the games were out, Albie was out interacting with everyone. Saturday, we're having a watch party. So first watch party for an away game for the South Carolina game. We'll be airing it, um, uh, showcasing it live and, and having food and the opportunity for students to come and gather safely in an outdoor space to watch the games. So one last one that comes to mind is we're working on um, showing a movie in Jordan-Hare Stadium um, as our team is away for a couple of weeks. So working on several different ways for, for to still have events and for students to engage with one another. In general, what's your advice for parents and families who are trying to help their students meet new people? That's an important part of the college experience. And it might look a little different in COVID, but it's still able to be done what would you say to that? Tori, that's a, that's a popular question and understand that. And, but it's not a new challenge um, just because we're in a pandemic. And so for students to, to meet new peers and to, to interact with their colleagues, it kind of involves stu you know, students stepping out of their comfort zone. And there's a lot of different ways to be involved. Um, there, it could be through a campus a student may experience involvement on campus through a campus ministry. Um, that could be through an organization that's in a school or college that the student is a part of. And so that, that's also important is that students um, are connected to organizations and opportunities that are tied to their academic um, endeavors and their academic major. And so there are a lot of those um, based upon major. And then there are a lot of your, your community service efforts, your student government association, the programming board, campus recreation and the rec center. You know, there's opportunities for you to meet students and meet peers um, while working out or, or in between um, uh, on your way to and from um, the rec centers when they're in class. You know, they have an opportunity to for in-person instruction. You know, going to class is an opportunity for students. Those in-person classes is an opportunity for students to meet their peers and, and figure out, uh, you know, maybe a group to study with or maybe that's how they learn about another way to get involved um, through a friend or a classmate um, telling them about an opportunity that they're involved with. Um, I think you've got to also think through experiences in the, in the dining halls, like how can when you're going through and eating a meal and how do you interact with those in the dining hall and, and have a meal, share a meal with um, those that you live with or are friends of roommates, et cetera. And so I think there are a lot of different ways if you were to slow down and think about the opportunities, that is tough. Once again, that involves a student stepping out of that comfort zone um, and, and reaching out and, and, and speaking up when they have the opportunity to interact with their peers around campus. One thing I think is also important to talk about, we talked about if they have an in-person class, but even if they're virtual Zoom classes, there are ways to talk in the chat during a synchronous Absolutely. lecture delivery or in Canvas in the discussion posting groups and that online tool. Um, class can still be a great way to meet people it just, it doesn't have to just be in person. Would you agree with that? Absolutely, I would agree with um, your take on, it, it doesn't have to happen in the actual classroom, but even in the virtual setting with virtual classes, I think there's opportunities for students, while the class may end, there's opportunities for students to stay on that Zoom session and to interact with one another, figure out maybe an opportunity to study, I know even some of the social media platforms like GroupMe have added a, a Campus Connect option where you can connect with people um, from your classes through that platform. Or through Canvas, students have the opportunity to see who's in their class and, and, and taking advantage of reaching out to some of those classmates to get together to study or to um, just to generally hang out. So we talked about, you know, part of meeting new people is being a little vulnerable, putting yourself in a position where you're not entirely comfortable. I think probably the same thing could be said of getting involved too. Going to a group meeting for the first time is not maybe the easiest for some people. Right. So what advice would you have for students who are looking to get involved, who maybe just haven't found their place yet? How would you help them to get involved? 
One great suggestion is the, the Office of Student Involvement, third floor of the Student Center. We have what we call involvement ambassadors. And so they are on site. They're, they're in the building during regular business hours, Monday through Friday, um, 10 to 2 is a time every day of the week where you can come in person. We also have a virtual opportunity for you to reach out um, and, and meet with one of those ambassadors. And they are happy to sit down and talk through, just what, are, what are you passionate about? Maybe you don't know what organizations are out there. They'll help you look through AU Involve, help you understand that platform, figure out how to find um, events that are happening and connect you with organizations um, and tell you about some of the other workshops that we have going on and opportunities for you um, to connect with peers. And so I think that is a great way for students. If they are just unsure, they don't know where to start, it's overwhelming, this is big for them. We, we talk about there being over 550 organi registered organizations, that is a lot. And so we are happy to sit down um, with students, involvement ambassadors, our peer-to-peer -peer, um, discussing through what getting involved looks like. We've been learning a lot as we've been going through fall. I think everyone across campus has learned a lot. Um, and so we're getting close to the time where we're planning for spring. So as the person in charge of student involvement, what are we looking at for spring of 21 as we get ready to close out fall and move into a new semester? Great question. I think we are gearing up. The students have been preparing a spring calendar. And so what does that look like? What does that involve? It, it involves several of the traditional events that we would have in spring, and we're looking forward to having those events in person. Um, following all the, any guidelines, we will review our guidelines for our student orgs and for campus events towards the end of the semester, but we feel very confident in, in our lineup for, for having a full lineup for the spring, um, both in person, and we will continue to offer virtual opportunities for students to be engaged, and in many cases, it'll be a hybrid model. Um, we're going to try every um, and in every situation possible where if you would like to enjoy this experience in person, you can do that and we will offer a virtual experience. So, but our goal is definitely to, to keep moving forward with in-person experiences. Well, Corey, thanks for taking some time and speaking with us today. I think that this will go a long way in helping parents and families to understand that there are things happening. We have plans to have things happen in the future. And I appreciate you spending some time with us today. Thank you and War Eagle. War Eagle. That's episode four of COVID-19 Connection. Next week, we'll be joined with Dr. Doug Henkes, who's the Director of Student Counseling and Psychological Services for Auburn University. As always, never hesitate to reach out, to call, to email. If you have questions or concerns, we're here to help. We hope that you're well, we hope that you're safe, and War Eagle.